Yeah. Sweet. What? Yeah, my purple backpack. They don't need them now. They're Oh, I have, yeah, I have extras. Wait, uh, were you okay to rent goal ref separate goals? Okay. Cool. cool. All right, and we are back with a BU versus RPI game in the second semifinal game here at the MQC opener. Oh, yeah. Laura, do we have the name sheets? Yeah. Okay, yeah, no. Consider yourself more of a color or play-by-play -play person. <laughs> you can be the play-by-play. -play. I'll be the color commentary. This is the second semifinal game in the Harvard versus Tufts semifinals game. Harvard came out on top. Now we have RPI versus BU. And RPI is coming off an Elite Eight run at last year's USQ Nationals. They're seeing a fairly significant amount of turnover in their roster this year, whereas BU actually made a run to the Sweet 16 with a very young team last year, uh, which they returned most of their important players from. So it'll be interesting to see how they stack up. Do we have the RPI sheet here now? Yeah. Oh, great. Oh, okay. <laughs> thank you. And looks like it is RPI getting to the quaffle first and it looks like RPI comes away with bludger control as well. So that's the keeper, Max Carey, bringing the quaffle up uh, for RPI. Fiona Weishart leading him up the pitch. Taps out a couple of BU point defenders. Johnny Aruda beat out by Weishart. Carey's looking for a pass, but ends up getting beat by number 24 at BU. He's not called beat though. He recovers the quaffle, but his shot is picked off by Tyler Locke at BU. He's got a clear run at the hoops. Gets her, does not get around Lysak. Ends up turning the corner and missing the shot. Great defense by Ellie Lysak to prevent a clear goal. One on one in space, that'll be a goal almost every time, but really, really good defense stops it there. And now carries on a run after exchange of beats, and he takes it to the hoop strong and scores. Really strong swing for RPI there. And they end up 10 ahead instead of 10 down. RPI's retained bludger control. Fiona Weishart and Carson Olazaba sitting in a wide set here. Locks swings the ball out right to Johnny Aruda. He's defended by number 19 of RPI. Ball out on the wing to number 5 of BU. Wrapped up by Carey. Back to Locke. He's got Olazaba coming on him from behind. Locke has to flip it around. Aruda throws a nice fake and ends up putting the ball through. He's getting hit by Nick Zoner of RPI. Great composure by Aruda to keep, put the ball through under pressure. Olazaba misses a beat. BU's going to pick up Ledger Control. Well, they don't. Olazaba picks the ball right out of the BU beater's hands there. 19 gets a pass to Lysik, who has an easy finish. No, I know, I know. Weishardt's beat up, but Olazaba gets one back for RPI. He ends up losing out, and 19 of RPI is on a break. He's got Zoner for the pass, does yeah. make the pass, and it's an easy finish. All right, that's 30-10 RPI. 
And RPI does walk away with bludger control again. Exchange of beats should see RPI keep bludger control. Locks dancing around with Nick Zoner on him. Screen set by number 41, Lintner. Falls out to Lintner. Defended by Zoner. He ends up taking a shot that is called good by the goal ref, but decisively not good by Ethan Sturm, the head ref. So it'll stay 30 to 10. And BU has gained bludger control. Ball out on the right wing to number 19, Baki. Over to Lysak and back to Carey. 19 spins through a tackle, goes to put the ball up through the hoop, Locked misses the shot. Yeah. Lock picks it up. Lock's on a break here, but finally gets around Carey. Should have a goal. Tries to spin around Zona and eventually puts it through. RPI with control again. Weishart going to work on the point defenders. Over to Lysik on the left wing. Pump fake. Back to Zoner up top. Finds Baki who just misses a shot on the uh, far hoop. Oh, but it falls out to Zoner and finds Baki again. Very nice passing by RPI there. Got all three chasers up top involved. And this is a 30 point game right now. Sorry, a 20 point game. It's 40 20, not 40 10. What? Looks like that pass may have been intended to go behind hoops. 74 Nate McKay tries to pick it off, but it ends up falling to RPI. McKay rocks number 19, who thought he had just come up with an easy recovery, and McKay's eventually beat out. RPI in the classic overload set, working on the right wing. Ball back to Carey. He's brought down by McKay. No call so far. RPI wants a call for tackle from behind, but Carey comes away with it anyhow. He's charging towards the hoops. Brought down again by McKay. And there's no call on the play. BU ends up coming away with the call for there. BU's looking around something of their offense right now. Locke is bringing the ball up, calling for a play. Yeah, the offense is mostly run through Locke so far for BU. Seems like maybe RPI has a bit more of an offensive identity so far this game. Would you agree? Yeah, for sure. Quaffle is being brought up by number 21, Carey. And Fiona's tapping out all those chasers. Nice shot by Carey. The current score is 50-20 RPI. RPI has long been known as a strong defensive team, and that's holding true here so far. BU's having a bit of trouble getting anything on defense as McKay loses out yep. to Zoner and Baki there. Pass wide over to Lysak. Swings it back up top. Back to Lysak. Hey, 
Looks like McKay's really trying to bring some aggressiveness to the BO defense here. Oh. Strong shot by Zoner, way over hoops. Game time is 8.06, and BU has the ball. He's bringing it up. A couple subs from RPI as they start to get into their depth. Locke subbed out for the first time so far, so it'll be interesting to see how BU runs their offense without him on the field. And a really aggressive drive by number 10 of BU, the substitute keeper, but uh, ends up going for a push shot, and it leads to a breakaway for RPI. Strong tackle by Adia BU, but it falls back out to RPI, and number 15 works a very nice pass. To zero? Yeah, and number zero, Katrina Mason finishes it. So BU wants a timeout here. I think they'll want to regroup and try to get something going in the half-court offense. Yeah, hopefully they're going to need their beaters to really work with their chasers on this. And uh, even if they can't get control over RPI's beaters, maybe they can create some chaos and create a scoring opportunity. Right, I don't think it's necessarily that RPI is held control for the vast majority of the game, right? Probably over 50%, but not... Yeah. Yeah. And they have a new pair in that's not um, Carson and Fiona, so. So RPI kind of looking as veteran savvy as ever. What do you think BU needs to do to get back into the game? Yeah, I mean, BU's got a bunch of young, new or at least young players, right? I honestly, they're calling their plays. I think they just got to execute, work with their beaters. That's what I want to see. like Wisehart's hyping up her team over there. Don't want to lose any steam. RPI always known as the hype team. Oh yeah. Once again, the score is 60-20 in favor of RPI. Game time is about a little over eight minutes. And BU's got the ball, bringing it up. With number 10, Zach Bowerman. So it looks like we've got kind of some indecision over the shot by BU there. Wait, what's the time? Harry Greenhouse, BU coach, thinks it was good. <laughs> Goal is called, no good. Beat before. I uh, think 60-20 RPI? Yeah. Oops. So no new keeper in for RPI. Finds runner on the right wing. And back up top. 
A little bit of a break from the overload set that you often see from RPI. Look to be running somewhat of a diamond here. Oh. And pass across cleared up by beater number 26 on BU, Vincenzo Vinny. Yeah. Maybe the diamond set not as polished as the overload for API right now. So early in the season. Looks like BU is running a diamond here. And that was a pass pretty clearly after a beat, I thought, so RPI should come away with that. RPI is calling that there's a no blood there's situation. There's none, in case you can't hear. Yeah. <laughs> and Zoner's streaking Plus down the field, zero. pass to Katrina. Oh, Ooh. ball almost goes through. Oh, and it looks like zero of RPI might be hurt. And yeah, this is going to be a stop stoppage for injury. So for those still watching, we're in an injury timeout right now. We'll be back with you when play is ready to resume again. Oh, 
we stop and restart? Nah, we'll just keep it going. Okay. There's a lip sync option. <laughs> I don't know if they'll do that. I don't think so. We are still here on the live stream, but just waiting on a injury on the field on RPI player number zero. Looks like something with her ankle. The EMTs are wrapping her up now, and we should be getting back to it in another minute or two. So it looks like we'll be with, back with you shortly here. Um, 
Number zero, Katrina Mason is being brought off the field. So Mason was really like tenaciously fighting off heavy defensive pressure around the hoops for the injury. So hope she will recover quickly, and we are just about ready to get back going. Number 15, Stephen Trempel is starting behind hoops with the quaffle. Right. Refs are about to get ready to start play. Looks like this should be a simple enough goal for RPI off the restart here. It's got a dunk and a passing option to Zoner on the small hoop. And finishes through the middle hoop. So that should be 70 to 20 in favor of RPI. So keeper number 10, Zach Berman, agrees to the ball up. And the pass to Hoops is just difficult to corral for the chaser there, number 8. And RPI is on a breakaway. Oof. But blocked by keeper. Right, it was a bit of a speculative pass by 73. We just kind of put the ball up there. The RPI beaters are up in BU's zone, working on the BU chasers, though, which is a little unusual. BU does have a beater back to clean up, though, number 31. That is Brittany Lee. And BU will recover the quaffle. RPI with high bludger pressure. BU tries to pass out of it by going low. And it looks like number eight almost got around the keeper there, but ended up losing out. RPI's beer is holding control, playing pretty wide here. Picking off BU chasers on each wing. Ball goes back to the center. Passes out under defensive pressure by McKay. And again, a bit of a speculative pass over the hoops, but the keeper comes up with it. And it looks like BU defender Nate was able to push the RPI player out of bounds and we'll get the ball turned over to him. McKay's had a pretty strong defensive presence this game so far. Last year's BU team, not known for being incredibly physical, so he kind of brings a different dimension to their defense. Nice block by RPI beater number 52. Looks like BU's beaters are talking to their ball carrier, Tyler Locke. Number one, I think Jacob Ehrlich briefly recovered control for BU. RPI ends up picking it up, but now BU has a bludgerless look. Yep. Pass from McKay goes across to Jacob Lintner as a simple enough finish on the far hoop. Score 70-30? Yep. Score is 70-30, RPI. And time is 13 minutes. And as a bonus, BU does walk away from the struggle for bludger control that happened up pitch with two. So they get the goal and control. Ball out to the right wing, RPI and overload again. McKay's kind of roving. And the RPI offensive sets have uh, broken down a little bit the last few possessions. It looks like they're trying to force some passes that aren't necessarily there. But 
think part of it is just integrating new players into the team. As with any sport, it takes a while to learn offensive sets. Ehrlich misses the beat. Ball does go across to McKay. Nearly finds Lintner. Yeah. Wow! And there's a great block by the RPI keeper to reject what would have been an easy goal. Sorry, I didn't get a number on the RPI keeper there, but great defensive stop to save the goal. Ooh, and a big block by Tyler Locke there at Hoops. Bu comes out at the defensive stop, and they're still struggling to score, but it does seem like Bu is kind of settling into the game defensively. And it looks like Ehrlich is going to win bludger control for BU. However, they're not in the play right now. And RPI intercepts a pass. Number 19, mm -hmm. breakaway and goal. Number, uh, number 19, just Jason Olmquist. Or Justin Bucky. Or Justin Bucky. just kidding. Nice assertive drive and finish by him right there with two beaters in the vicinity. If you're gonna run there, you have to be confident. This offense, BU's got bludger control. See how they're gonna use it to their advantage to make a scoring opportunity. Big beat by Vinny. Black runs in. Oh, but pass to the keeper, and RPI has the ball again. Yeah, defense has been looking better from you, but the uh, half court offense hasn't quite been there so far. Nice jumping beat by uh, Vinny there. And BU has retained bludger control and gotten a defensive stop. Do we have three or four? Eight, three. Is that Definitely eight. I was asking if you had eight, four, so. I was trying to help out. Hey, we're ready. Remote, remote. Ellie, you're off the room. Ellie, you're off the room. So do you think BU's kind of offensive struggles have more to do with them not having a bludger control up to this point mm, in the game? Or? I, not necessarily, because I think their beater matchups, at least throughout, have been nothing like super disparate, but I don't know. I think, I don't think they're being patient enough, but what do we got? We got drive in by, was that Nate K? Right, Nate McKay. So nice beat on Wiseheart there by uh, Vinny. It leads to a drive by McKay. He's a big guy. He's hard to bring down in space and finishes that to bring the Quaffle differential to 40 points in favor of RPI. Looks like RPI is running their overload again. We got Lysik all the way there by the hoops. She's See looking if for the pass. Her. It looks like Locke has her in his sights. Oh, yeah. But the drive kind of draws him away from that hoop. And it's a nice goal for RPI. Classic drive and dish there. And RPI winning control back as well. Nice dodge by uh, Vinny there. He's probably going to get bludger control for BU. Lock called clear off the beat from Weishart. 
This is a bludgeonless drive for BU, and Locke does finish on the short hit. Locke not necessarily a powerful driver, but he's very agile and hard to bring down. And just wove his way through four defenders. Uh, oh, wow. All right, well, there is a potential snitch catch by number 15 on RPI. That looked very clean to me, at least. <laughs> Before the catch, the score was 50-90 in favor of RPI. And that's that's good. Strimple with the catch. That was one of the fastest catches I've ever seen. <laughs> All right, so well-organized performance by RPI. We'll put them in the final against Harvard.